Well, this was a year that many began to truly grasp the climate crisis. It was the hottest year in 120,000 years, and scientists warned that humans and ecosystems could struggle to adapt to the warming planet. Bill Weir takes a look. Science tells us that 2023 was the hottest Earth has been in 120,000 years, shattering records in ways that are hard to comprehend and creating events that frankly exceed our imaginations. Who could have imagined 31 straight days over 110 degrees, even in Phoenix? The rate of heat deaths in Maricopa County has climbed 25% a year for two years running. And desert cities everywhere are realizing the need to build cooling into public policy. But in the same mega drought, who could have imagined rivers in the sky dumping so much water on California that it brought Tulare Lake back from the dead? If you'd stood here for the last couple of generations, you'd be watching the sunset over dusty fields of cotton or alfalfa or pistachio trees. And now it is waterfront property. This new age of water whiplash means too much H2O or never enough across huge swaths of the nation, forcing farmers and water managers to reimagine how every drop is used or wasted. This is the first of what will be many barges that can bring about a half million gallons of fresh water at a time. 2023 forced the economy to reckon with a Mississippi River too low to move food like it used to and too weak to keep Gulf salt water from creeping into drinking and irrigation supply. And when West Maui was the lush Venice of the Pacific, no one imagined how generations of water theft and invasive grasses would turn the capital of the Hawaiian kingdom to tinder or the hurricane winds that would blowtorch the precious town of Lahaina into ash in the deadliest American wildfire in modern times. It's just unrecognizable. One of the most charming, beloved port cities anywhere in the world is just scorched like a bomb went off. But 23 also brought lessons in resilience. There you go, man, right there, over your neck. Keep you nice and cool. From people like Archie Kalepa, the Hall of Fame lifeguard, who is helping lead West Maui back from the ashes with love and aloha. And Heidi Lang, who lost everything to California's deadliest fire five years ago, but decided to stay and rebuild paradise. My community and my my neighbors and my friends and my church and my job was all still here. So my little village, My little village is here in paradise. Heidi and her neighbors are learning from tragedy and rebuilding stronger than ever. These are aluminum Mm -hmm. frame, Mm -hmm. tempered glass. And as disaster forces us to reimagine how to live with nature transformed, breakthroughs in clean energy also abound by the day. And you only need a tiny little bit of fuel. That's right, yeah. Scientists at the National Ignition Facility have repeated their success in nuclear fusion, nudging us closer to a world powered by little man-made stars and boxes that use salt water for fuel and never melt down. There's still many, many technology jumps that we need to make, but that's what makes it so exciting. But even if fusion takes generations, the two cheapest forms of energy in human history are already onshore wind and sun. And with a surge of investment in clean energy storage, Startups like Antora hope to power entire factories with thermal batteries like this. 1,600 degrees Celsius. So this is hotter than the melting point of steel, and it's just a couple feet inside that shell. I have a hard time explaining to my kids what nuclear fusion is, (laughs) but this is just a hot rock in a box. (laughs) Exactly. So 2023 also reminded us to expand our imaginations, not just for the worst that can happen, but the best. The transition is inevitable. It's going to happen. We have the tools we need. We just need to deploy them.